Another aspect that I think the Muslims should be at the forefront is the problem of food in this country. We now have an obesity epidemic in this country that is spreading all over the world because of the types of food we're eating. There's ample evidence now that plant-based diets are the most important types of diets. Our Prophet ﷺ was extremely conservative in what he ate. He did not encourage overeating. In fact, he encouraged slightly undereating. And this is clear in our Sunnah. All of these problems that we're seeing in obesity are from the way our food is produced. In fact, one of the people at the National uh, in, uh, Institute for Health said that we produce our food like crack cocaine. It's designed to, to have an addictive effect on people. We have people now addicted to fast foods. And this is real. These are real addictions. And Muslims, we have a, a religion that's predicated on halal and tayyib, on, on halal and pure food. It's one of the most important things. In fact, they said that the early companions, the early community were more, they were more concerned about their food than any other aspect of their lives to eating good things, to eating wholesome things, and to making sure that they were purchased with pure money, that the money and the earnings were pure. We know in Surah Al-Kahf, when they sent the people of the cave into the city, they asked, he told him, look for the purest food. I mean, this is in Surah Al-Kahf, look for the purest food, because people of righteousness are always concerned with what their body is made up of, because it's the body that is going to be your energy, either spiritual or demonic. And when you're eating negative food, you're going to be doing negative things. Sidi Ahmed Zarruq, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore him back to his place of resting, because we recently found out, uh, many of us, that Sidi Ahmed Zarruq's grave was desecrated in Libya, literally dug up. And these people claim that Libyans were worshiping Ahmed Zarruq. Sidi Ahmed Zarruq said that all of the blessings of the world are in two things, the company you keep and the food that you eat. So make sure your company is good company and make sure your food is pure food. We should be encouraging organic farms. We should be encouraging organic gardens. We should be at the forefront of the urban homesteading movement. These are things that Muslims should be involved in. We should, we should reject don't think, you know, don't think oh, I'm going to go to McDonald's and have a halal fish. Right? Seriously, because the whole way that McDonald's, everything about McDonald's is antithetical to our Prophet ﷺ and his sunnah. And I'm speaking openly. I don't care what anybody says. I am telling you that fast food is something that is destroying people. And we have to oppose fast food consumption. Don't drink Coca-Cola, don't drink Pepsi-Cola, don't drink Calthar-Cola, don't drink cola, drink water, drink milk, drink soy milk if you want to, but don't drink these drinks that have no, nothing good for you and the way they're produced is unhealthy. We have an unsustainable consumption of plastic. If you look back there and look at the number of plastic cans, that are plastic bottles of water that are back there, we've got a garbage fill in Isna because we're drinking. This is unsustainable. It cannot be sustained. We have to find alternative approaches to the way we consume things. We have to be committed to being green, the green dean. We have to, but we have to have commitment. I don't want applause. I want real commitment. I want people to commit to changing their lives. We need to divest in our homes. We need to be, we, people, we talk about boycotting Israel. I'm talking about boycotting all of them. If you can recognize their names, you should be boycotting them because these people are destroying this planet. They're over consuming, they're overselling. Costco is a crisis. The whole Costco mentality. Do you know that they don't even put labels on Costco? Costco halls so you don't know where things are in Costco because they want you to wander around because they know people will have impulse buying and buy more things than they actually needed. This is social psychology. You are being manipulated like mice in a maze. And we need to oppose this type of mentality because it's destroying people. So I'm really asking you to really think about 
the better world buying guide. We should have our own Muslim version of that, of, of really making choices. I don't fly United Airlines anymore because they get an F. I don't fly American. I fly Virgin American, I fly uh, Southwestern, and I fly uh, the, uh, the uh, Jet Blue because these have the highest ratings in terms of how they treat their employees in terms of their commitment to social responsibility, the amount of money they're having. Legislation is not having an impact on these people. They control legislation. The only thing that will have an impact on these people is that we stop supporting them because they have bought our senators, they have bought our congressmen. Mitt Romney speaks on their behalf and Barack Obama speaks on their behalf. We need to take back our country and the way we do that is by educating ourselves and educating others and making moral commitments, moral commitments to not being part of the madness that we're in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kunu shuhada ala nas, be witnesses unto mankind, be witnesses unto mankind, be kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, you are the best community brought forth. We have to embody those meanings. We need to stop supporting clothes. You know, I get now my clothes are made. I have a tailor who prays five prayers in the masjid. And I go and he makes me my clothes in one day. And I know that the garments are actually fair trade garments. I don't want to support this system anymore and I don't think you should want to or you should. We need to have an exit strategy and we can do that. There are morally committed Americans that are not Muslims that are living purer lives in terms of what they practice than most of the Muslims that I know. I know people that don't carry credit cards in their wallets because they don't believe in them. Non-Muslim peoples that are doing this, they will not carry credit cards. I met a Catholic who was so committed to the idea of not having usury and she felt and she actually engaged the Muslims and she said I was so deeply disappointed because when I found out Muslims like the Catholics of old before 1832 Muslims also maintain the prohibition of usury but still unlike the Catholics still adhere to it and she said when I went to try to create a group of people that could work together to get out of the usurious system. We should have our own credit cards. We can do this. Muslims can have their own credit cards. We need to have our own banks. Banks are not easy. They're not hard to start. It's very easy to start. It's so easy to start that instead of the bank, the, the bank robbers, they used to rob the banks. They realized we can just start our banks. Why rob them and risk going to jail? Let's just open up our own banks and then we can rob all the people, right? This is what they did. So they actually got on the boards of the banks, right? Really, this is what's happened. So this is absolutely imperative that we really think about this. I would recommend going to moveyourmoney.org about moving out of the major banks into the smaller credit unions, local credit unions, local banks as a first step because all of these major banks, they own all of the pawn shops, they own all of the usurious uh, check cashing schemes in the poorest neighborhoods. It's the same companies. You should uh, look at the documentary Maxed Out and see what they do. It's sinister what they do. And they, they destroy your credit scores because they want you to have low credit scores. So if you miss one payment, you get knocked down on your credit score because they want you to pay more interest. It's all a game, it's a scheme. And people have been really, unfortunately, they become victims, but it's because of our lack of vigilance. It's our lack of vigilance. The, the, so this is, I, I really feel this absolutely ne necessary that we become part of the solution and not part of the problem but we have to do it with real moral commitment. That's the only way.